church in the hood Faith in hip hop Church in the hood Faith in hip hop Yeah, it's a movement, baby Church in the hood Faith in hip hop It's a movement, baby It's a movement, baby Faith in hip hop Yo, it don't stop Church in the So glad, so, so glad that you're tuned in to the virtual Holy Hookup today. This is Reverend LaDonna Clark, a.k.a. Lady Jit Jit Jam. Of course, Jam stands for Jesus Anointed Me. And so far this hour, you have heard the sounds of Mr. Testimony with I Pray and also Charlie Wilson. I'm blessed. I'm going to turn you on to a wonderful, wonderful artist by the name of Tony Jones, and she calls this one Sanctuary. sorcery and 
generational spells, curses that keep me in a state of deep sleep and numbness to my majestic magic that's encoded in my DNA. I will not permit incompatible energies to infiltrate my sanctuary. At the core of my heart space, feminine mystery is downloading into my behavior through devotional prayer as I speak, as I receive, as I step into the room. In this temple, ceremony is going down. I bow and surrender my attachment to the desires of my heart happening, laying it all down at the altar of sovereign strategy. I vow to drink from the word spirit put in my mouth. I'm body growth, priestess swag has taken over. I feel low-key sanctified. The miracles, the confidence are flowing in biblical proportions. I have wisdom inside of me. Being aligned is a lifetime of clarity for my life. I have realized an ageless knowing of self with this sanctuary. I'm sanctuary. I express and live my life in a state of When I realize I'm sliding back into emotional attachment to a perspective, I breathe deeply and return to a grounded state. I'm a sacred temple. No one who meets me is ever the same. My body is sacred. My mind is sacred. My eyes are sacred. My conversation is sacred. My time and energy is sacred. I'm walking, thinking, feeling, sanctuary. I choose my lover, partner, and friends wisely. I'm a vessel for spiritual enlightenment, not spiritual entertainment. I can only allow occupancy for those that are meant for me. I welcome synchronicity, flexibility with what I desire. I give reverence to the sovereign plan for my life and humble my impulse to know. I am full of the illustration expressed in living the gift of life. I'm remembering my divine heritage as a cosmic being. I am responsible for being present in this. The genesis of my life and existence flows from creativity. Creativity is God, the nucleus of life. When I declare I am of a divine nature, I am declaring a devotion to being creative. I have so much fun being guided by the grid I am. My life is expressing the divine plan. Most high expose any and all hidden disobedience and strongholds in my life. You are the light of my life. I'm sanctuary. I'm a physical animation of the spirit of creation. Creator, most high. I'm seeing the gospel everywhere and all things and beings. I'm starstruck. Lord God, I come to you today as humbly as I know how, because my soul is heavy, troubled, 
and seeking your guidance and your wisdom, your understanding and your wise counsel. the big mistake to think that our money could do it. We made the big mistake of thinking that our looks and how fine we are could do it. We made the mistake of thinking that our computers, our cell phones, our technology could do it. Oh God, we made the mistake of thinking our own human knowledge in our colleges could do it. Lord God, we made the mistake of thinking that only our synagogues or our churches or our temples or our belief systems could do it. But God, we can do nothing without you in the mix, without you in the middle, without you orchestrating everything that we do. America finds itself with a whole lot of money that could possibly be distributed. But I say unto everyone that hears me today that money can't do it. That Washington, Washington can pour out a whole lot of money and it will dry up like the desert sand without water. Without water from heaven. Jesus spoke to the woman at the well and said, the water that I will give you, you will thirst no more. Lord God, give us that water. In the name of Jesus, give us that water so that we will thirst no more for greed, so that we will thirst no more for just experiences of flesh, so that we will thirst no more for just filling up our bank accounts so that we will thirst no more for vengeance through hate, so that we will not thirst anymore for violence. Give us your water, Lord God, so that we will not thirst for dominance, for their authoritarianism, for racism, for selfishness and jealousy. Lord God, we your kids. You know all about us. You know what we do, what we don't do before we even do it. You know our beginning, our middle, and our end. And I come to you, Lord God, on this day, laying prostrate in the spirit, saying, help us, God. There are too many dying senselessly. Help us, God. You have given us so much. And it seems in our world today that the more you have given us, the more we lose our mind, the more disrespectful we are, the more less concerned we are about our fellow brother or sister. Lord, I just wanted to have a little talk with you from the heart, from the soul, because I've been listening to the soul cries, God, and the soul cries the soul cries, the soul cries are so loud. The soul cries are even too many for me to even begin to think that I can 
help or do anything about. There are tangible things that I may be able to assist people with, but God, what we all need to be reminded of, that only you change hearts. Only you change souls. Only you ultimately can change the mind of someone hell-bent on self-destruction, hell-bent on hate, someone in so much pain that they don't know anything else but hate. They don't know anything else but vengeance. They don't know anything else but death. They don't know anything else but killing because they've been so scarred. They've been so hurt. They've been so left behind. They've been so dragged through the mud of life. God, we need you. We need you like we need air. We need you like we need blood. We need you, God. We need you to intervene today. There are a lot of us that are working for the good. We are trying to do our very best to point your nation, to point your world, to point your people in the right direction, Lord. But in this hour, in this hour, We are feeling extremely overwhelmed, which reminds us that even in our well-doing, we must continue to come to your throne of grace and put our petitions before you and even before the things that we choose to do to try to help others. We have to put those petitions on the altar of heaven and we have to seek your grace we have to seek your guidance. We have to seek your love. We have, to res- we have to seek your respect. We have to seek you, God, to help unify us as a people, as nations, and as faith leaders, and leaders in faith. We have to seek you, Lord, now like we've never done before, because this house is divided. And you have taught us that a house divided cannot stand. We need you, God. We're praying for your heavenly hand to intervene right now in Jesus' name. We call on you. We call on you as humbly as we know how to help the homeless, to help the sick and the shut-in, to help those in prison. We call on you right now, Lord God, to help those in high places that have been tainted with evil and wrongdoings. We ask God that you'll send your angels, your ministering angels, and help us change your world. Help us change your people and make your streets in your cities some place that is peaceful to walk, to stroll, and allow the kids to come out and play again. We need you, God. In Jesus' name.